Generation X, my generation, is usually very critical of Generation Y. We consider them impatient, lazy, self-absorbed, entitled, privileged. Let me give you my own example that leads me to think that there is a huge gap between the way both generations think. I've been working for many years and I have witnessed many situations. I'm working as an HR manager at a law firm. And you may be thinking, how is it possible that I'm here before you, quite a big audience, in a, speaking in a relatively calm way, but when I'm at the partners meeting, when I have to speak in front of them, they are my bosses, there's always an inner voice, a little inner voice inside my head that says, watch what you say, these are your bosses. And I have to fight against this voice, have to, in order to overcome it, and to speak up. Respect, respect, respect. This is the voice I have. <coughs> because respect is what I was taught in the school. Let's speak about that later. I have another example, nothing to do with the previous one. An example with a millennial. A young lawyer who was working with us under a temporary contract, she wanted to get a permanent role in our company. And she pressured me to speak very quickly with the partners and to get the necessary approval. So I did it. And when I got it, I told her, OK, you've been accepted. Congratulations. And can you imagine her answer? She told me, thank you very much. I need to think about it. Give me a day or two. And you laugh, yeah. Well, I couldn't believe it. But she had no problem at all in telling me that she needed more time, even though if she ran the risk of losing the job opportunity. Can you imagine how frustrating this was? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. But she, I'm sure she thought she had done nothing wrong. But let me tell you at the end of the, this talk how this story finished. So just wait, please. I've been working for more than 20 years and I have witnessed many situations. I can understand that my generation can have a negative opinion about millennials. Some people say, I hate them, I can't stand them. They irritate me, they frustrate me. I say, but why? Why is that? Why does generation X hate? Hate is a strong word, I know. Generation Y. I'm going to give you two examples that support this theory of hate. They belong to my professional experience. Firstly, a boss comes up to me and says, this young guy, I can't believe it. I have given him his big break out of a huge number of candidates. I have taught him everything he knows. I have given him all the freedom I've never imagined for me in my whole life. And now look, he simply says goodbye after one year. I can't believe it. Second example. A general manager just some weeks ago, she complained and she told me, this young lady, look, she said, I would like to set up my own business, okay? Please, I would appreciate it if you could Give me your opinion about how am I progressing in your company. Could you please inform me of the company balance after one month working here? She was completely shocked. She couldn't believe it. She was not happy at all, as you may guess. I've been working many years with baby boomers, with Generation Y, Generation X, my generation, and now with Z. Pulling the strings in all directions, calming waters, trying to do everything I could, okay? And I have reached a conclusion. The reason why Generation X hate Generation Y is because Generation Y has no fear. This is so simple and so basic, but this is the big thing. 
the absence of fear in generation Y compared to my generation X that is based on fear. And let me give you three reasons that support this theory of no fear. My generation X is afraid of not being successful. Many years ago, when I were growing up, I was taught that if I did things the right way, I could be successful and therefore, therefore happy. If I studied hard at the university, if I completed my studies with a master's, if I got a good job in which we, I could devote most of, our, of my time with a lot of sacrifice, if I got married, I could then have children, I could pay, pay the, best schools, the best school for my children, I could buy a big car, I could even buy a house or a apartment with a mortgage, of course. I could travel much more than, our, than my parents, and if I were successful enough, I could even attempt to buy a house by the sea or near the mountains. And we believed in this concept of success directly linked to happiness. I don't know if you're familiar with a Spanish term called Arturitos. Some people here, do you remember this, this term? When I started working 20 years ago, there was one big auditing firm that does not exist anymore, okay? That company developed a very successful model. It was a model to follow for many people. And at that time, many recent economic graduates Mm, had a, like a dream job, it was working there, because as I said before, it was really successful. But with one catch, the sacrifice of having no personal life whatsoever will work in there. But these are the values of my generation, what we learned when we, we were growing up. Sacrifice, success, and everything linked to happiness. And of course, we are now afraid of losing this success, the fact of not being successful, after so many years staggering down the path of sacrifice. Second idea, my generation is afraid of authority. Let me give you again my personal example. I studied at a very strict religious school. At that time, I couldn't challenge any opinion of my teachers. If I did it, I could phrase it as a question, but never as a statement that could call into question my teacher's own theory. If I did it, I could have been punish punished with having to do 500 lines, saying, I will never interrupt the rhythm of a class. But if I persisted in my non-conformist attitude, my parents could have received a letter at home informing me of my rebellious behavior. There's no need to describe my parents' face when I got home, of course. And all these ideas of authority, of respect, are deeply rooted inside our heads. I told you before, when I'm at the partner's meeting, that I have to fight against this voice, this inner voice that says respect, respect, respect. Because my generation was taught to have a great degree of this respect and behave. Millennials, in my opinion, are not quite on the same page. Thirdly, we're afraid of losing security, and this is logical. After so many years of sacrifice, we're not afraid of losing our status. It's true that we wish to have more freedom, and sometimes we would like to follow a less conventional path. But you can understand that now perhaps it's too late to put our security and that of our families on the line, okay? I'm sure you are familiar with a term called FOMO. Are you familiar? Fear of, yeah? Fear of missing out. This means the anxiety that something, an, an interesting event may be happening elsewhere, socially provoked by, sol by post seen on social media. And this is the definition according to the, the Oxford Dictionary. I would like to mention here another term Phobos, fear of being out of the system. 
This means the anxiety of leaving the system in this uncertain world. You will not find this term in the dictionary because I've made it up, Phobos. But I'm sure this is a common feeling among, among people from my generation, okay? We're now afraid of losing security, and this has a big impact on our decisions that regard our personal and professional life. So these are the three reasons. I'm going to mention them again. Afraid of not being successful, afraid of authority, and afraid of losing security. But suddenly, we come across a new generation called Y that hits us a slap in the face and makes us face up a new stark reality, okay? And our first reaction is saying, arrogant generation Y, because we do not understand them, because they are afraid, we are not afraid, and we are afraid, so it's so different, so simple, as I said before, okay? We do not understand them, because they have no fear. Generation Y has no fear. Let me tell you why, three reasons for that. Firstly, they set the bar of success on a different number of things. They have other priorities in life. Thirdly, they boldly defy authority. They don't care about the consequences of expressing their own feelings and opinions. And thirdly, they are adapted mm, to a new, uncertain and unpredictable world, conscious that security does not exist. Yeah. And our friend's reaction here is anger. I can believe it, this generation, how, how is it possible? It's true. This is our first reaction. But now that we are already in our 40s, beginning our 50s, we look back sometimes and we say, I wish I could have done things differently. It's not that we regret things that we did. We're very proud of them. But of course, we could have done things with less fear. And this is the very big moment, okay? When my generation stops hating millennials and starts becoming envious of them. And this is the great miracle. The door is open, the door that leads us to understand them when hatred becomes envy or preferably admiration. But my dear generation Y friends that are here in the room, I see some of them, the story doesn't finish here because there is one thing generation Y hates of generation X, my generation. And this is our experience, our intuition, our wisdom that we have developed during so many years with curiosity in the face of events. I like a principle that I would like to mention now. Benjamin Franklin said, after crosses and losses, men grow humbler and wiser. And I completely agree. And here, I'm very sorry. We have the upper hand, we have the advantage because we have experienced few disappointments we have fallen down and go back. We have developed huge experience during many years, okay? And this gives us a distinct advantage over millennials. Let me go back to the story I mentioned at the beginning, that young lawyer who wanted to have a permanent position at our firm. My first reaction would have been saying, Okay, if you are as interested as you told me, you should accept right now, otherwise you, use, you lose your turn. However, I took a deep breath, I beat my tongue, and I said, okay, I'm going to wait. I wait until tomorrow, please give me an answer tomorrow. On the next day, she came back. She told me she accepted, and now she's happily working with us. My experience, my intuition helped me in that situation because I understood that if I didn't want to lose a good lawyer, 
I had to be patient, understand her reasons, and look, at the end, the result was very good. Mm, although I have to say that I wouldn't have replied as she did. But these are an example of the different way of thinking I was telling you at the beginning. Hopefully, this advantage in experience does not make that generation Y hate X, okay? but transform this envy for wisdom into admiration. <coughs> I'm sure we can learn a lot from each other. We just need to put ourselves on the shoes of the other generation in order to understand where they are coming from without prejudices and with one goal, achieving mutual admiration for everything each generation contributes. Thank you.